Hi, everyone. Thanks, Pam. Thanks for handing this off. Thanks for getting framing it so well. I feel like I don't have anything left to do. Um, so again, my name is Jonathan Payne, and I am a senior program manager at JFF. And I spend the majority of my time there uh, working with sites to create and expand youth apprenticeship pathways at scales ranging from local to regional to state. And with a little luck in the future, um, we might be able to get some irons in the fire for some national pathways as well. And I'm really happy to be here today to have an opportunity to share with you the uh, JFF's self-assessment planning tool for youth apprenticeship programs, which uh, as my colleague Andrea messing Mathy earlier said, um, really helps take a process that can feel really abstract and really intra intractable um, and uh, uh, use it to essentially use this tool to ground that process to take an abstract concept and uh, and make it gr uh, ground it with some and so that it has some actionable steps um, and uh, a process that will ultimately achieve something tangible at the end. So here's what we know. Youth apprenticeships require a healthy ecosystem, not only for implementation, but especially for sustainability. Um, in order to help sites evaluate strengths and weaknesses in their systems, JFF developed the self-assessment and planning tool. And our goal was to help communities address critical foundational issues in developing, planning, and implementing high quality youth apprenticeship programs. By understanding their landscape, communities can leverage their best assets, plan to address barriers, um, and to support the creation of a program that will make, make a difference for students and for their families. The planning guide will help sites answer questions like, um, how do we know we're ready to establish a program? Or what needs to be in place? Or who are our partners and stakeholders and what are their roles within this pathway? To answer these questions, the planning guide is broken up into sections, uh, up into two sections that examine context into which the context into which the program will be established and the design of the program itself. The first section of the planning guide addresses the contexts or ecosystem into which a youth apprenticeship is trying to be established because let's face it, these aren't being constructed in a vacuum. By looking at the environment and systemic factors in the underlying big P policy landscape, it's possible to identify the strengths and weaknesses that might facilitate or potentially impede um, your process. In looking at the environmental factors, the toolkit will help sites consider systems leadership components, as well as the current business landscape and desire for a youth apprenticeship system. The other really important contextual component for establishing and supporting youth apprenticeship are the big P policy conditions that exist. And for this tool, we bucketed the policy landscape analysis portion around the five core PIA principles for a quality youth apprenticeship. Now, depending on who you are and where you are, where you're situated within your system, some of those factors may be within your locus of, of control and others may not. And that's okay. Because what I know from growing up watching the cartoon G.I. Joe is that knowing is half the battle. What is likely to be closer to your locus of control um, are the programmatic design elements of youth apprenticeship. And these are just as important as the underlying context. One of the biggest issues that can derail a youth apprenticeship program is, the, is our issues of quality. If employers and parents and teachers and leaders don't feel like the programs appropriately serve the needs of young people and their employer partners, Programs can lose traction as stakeholders lose trust. And so to ensure that programs, uh, that the program which is or will be established is high quality, um, the self-assessment planning uh, and planning tool helps sites evaluate several key factors which fall under two broad categories. The first is governance, which takes into consideration how the program is led, managed, and funded. And the second, um, and the second is the little p policies or practices that guide the implementation over time. Again, these little p policies or practices are organized around the five core PIA principles for quality youth apprenticeship. 
and which are, which are required to uh, serve the many stakeholders in youth apprenticeship, most of all young learners. And, can all, and these can also serve as the outcomes that can be used to measure programmatic success. These programmatic uh, factors are intended to be both practical and aspirational, and they, clear, they provide clear guidance to industry, education, and community leaders, as well as signals uh, to state and local policy makers. They set a high bar for program design out, and outcome and lay out the foundation for continuous improvement. So when sites use this planning guide, they'll evaluate themselves using a series of questions across the context and programmatic topics I just talked about. In an evaluation process, which looks pretty, which will look pretty familiar to many of you, um, sites can give themselves one of four levels from not present to established. And ultimately, this tool is a, functions a lot like a longer, um, mo really well-guided and really well-delineated SWOT analysis. So one key thing that I do want to make sure I point out um, is that this tool is intended to push thinking and facilitate a deeper systems evaluation. So when you decide that you want to use it, and we really hope you do, it'll be important to make sure that you set aside time, enough time, and that you bring the right group of stakeholders to the table. This shouldn't be done by one person in an hour, and it can't be done well by one person in an hour. The, uh, this time at the table with stakeholders is actually one of the, fa uh, the things that we found most powerful about using this tool. Set against the backdrop of youth, youth apprenticeship specifically, this toolkit allows intermediaries to assess um, where the implementation can accelerate and where and why they might stall. It allows cross-sector partnerships to, uh, to assess where they are and where they want to be because high quality youth apprenticeship is a concrete shared goal that can move across silos and facilitate dialogue at the community level, which ultimately catalyzes joint action. With strong representative leadership at the center, holding it together, uh, having clearly mapped out where, where you are and where you want to go, you can plan to move through roadblocks and uh, both, both in the design and implementation phase. Ultimately, with the goal of creating a strong public-private partnership that benefits everyone involved. I will pause there for any questions. All right, so let's see here. Can any youth apprenticeship stakeholder pick up and use this readiness tool, or is it best suited for use by an intermediary organization? So I think that uh, this is a great question. So I think that um, my answer to that would be yes and. Um, because I think that any apprenticeship stakeholder should be able to and can pick up this tool and use it. They, when they do, there will be some questions that will be left unanswered, that, that will be unanswerable for, that, uh, for them, because the, 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 the people that have that knowledge aren't necessarily at that table. Um, I think it's the same with, with an intermediary. Right, um, because these are all because youth apprenticeship is really so much about partnerships, right? Partnerships between secondary education and and post secondary education, between employer partners, which, with strong intermediaries, and and then the, the setting against the backdrop of, um, you know, workforce boards and community based organizations, because of the partnerships which go into these um, these pathways that cr that help uh, support these systems any one organization is probably not going to be able to take this tool, take this tool well, and also see, be able to answer all of the questions and really get a full sort of landscape analysis or understanding of what they need and what they'll need to do planning to move forward. So I would say that the, the answer is either can take it both together with a, with a cadre of other involved stakeholders will do it best. Um, let's see here. Question for Jonathan. Can you share an example or two of how a community has used this readiness assessment to prior prioritize their youth apprenticeship development 
or expansion strategy. Um, you know, I would love to, to say that, I, that yes, there is a time where I can, that I can point to, but I would say that this is more, uh, more, a more emblematic um, explanation of this might be really the, um, like the, the delineation between um, some of the barriers that occur around big P policy, little P policy, and then practice and the conflation that often exists in systems between those three. Um, you know, we'll often hear uh, about um, sites that won't, that, where they can't have anyone um, working on a site that's under 18. And, and the inevitable pushback question to that is, well, is that a big P policy that exists at the federal or state level? Is that a little P policy that exists within your business or your program? Or is that a, a practice question? Um, and, and so being able to tease out the differences in big P policy, little P policy and practice can often help to, um, uh, to elevate or to bring to the forefront a, a, an actionable solution to getting beyond that, um, that hurdle. Okay, once my uh, partnership has completed the assessment and there, um, are there tools that can help us address gaps or needs? Um, there are lots of tools that, that, are, that are available. Um, I will say a uh, shameless pitch for all of the resources that JFF has at our Center for Apprenticeship and Work-Based Learning. We have um, a lot, too many, honestly, too many tools to list. Um, you know, from, from uh, pre-apprenticeship frameworks based in IT to all of our knowledge base for the industrial manufacturing technician um, apprenticeship pathways, um, you know, just literally too many, too many to list there. And there are other great resources that exist at JFF. We have, uh, we're starting to build a community of practice. Um, and so that is a place where that, that forum, as it gets up and running um, and continues to build, will be places where people will be able to go and post questions um, and, and engage in, in collegial dialogue with their peers. Um, we're also, you know, doing things like creating newsletters to, to send out that, that you'll hopefully be able to sign up for in the near future that'll also highlight the resources that are available. Um, you know, there's no single great repository. I think that we have a pretty good one. Okay, so awesome. I really appreciate um, you being here. Thank you everyone for having me here. I hope that you'll use this self-assessment and planning tool. Um, I hope that it helps facilitate your success.